And what we want to do, we want to complete our spaces so that we are in the framework of uh, uh, Banach spaces. And this is what is known as a Sobolev spaces. So in the simplest case, assume that we have a domain in Rn that is an open connected subset. Uh, we can define the space L2 of omega. So this is a space of all those functions which are square integrable plus an infinity. And you know very well from uh, analysis course that this is Banach space, in fact, uh, Hilbert space. And what you also know is that uh, in here, we have the space of smooth functions with compact support on omega. And it is dense in this subspace. So this means that I could define L2 uh, by saying that I take the uh, space C0 uh, infinity omega, and I close this with respect to the L2 norm. Right, that's uh, the approach I will take uh, for uh, the latter, uh, for uh, various generalization of this construction. So uh, what we could do, we could define LP omega, right? So this is uh, just the closure of C infinity omega, but now I take the LP norm. And uh, what we also could do, uh, we could uh, construct spaces WKP omega, right? This is the closure of smooth functions, but now with respect to the norm WKP. So let me define what it is. Uh, if I have a smooth function u, I can uh, take its LP norm, I can take its, uh, so I can take its uh, derivative, say now y u, I can also take the LP norm of that, and so on, till I take all uh, case derivatives of u in the LP norm. Well, uh, Sometimes, uh, so this norm would be okay, but sometimes, so uh, I want to, to take LP, uh, the norm to the power P, and then the P's root uh, of that uh, is sometimes better behaved. Okay, um, now uh, this all works also for manifolds, so if M is a say compact, uh, well, we don't need compact at this point, just a Riemannian manifold. I can define, uh, you know, uh, if I have a function u, a smooth function with compact support on M, I can take its derivative, so this is a section of T star M, and since my manifold is Riemannian, I have a covariant derivative here, the Levi-Civita connection, so I can take the second derivative of du, I can take the third derivative, and so on. Right, and with this at hand, so we can define uh, W, K, P on M in the same way. So uh, I, I can take the space of smooth uh, continue, uh, of smooth functions with compact support on M and close this with respect to the norm WKP. All right, and so what this gives us, this gives us a sequence of spaces uh, for any P bigger than, uh, say, one. We have uh, the space LP M, which contains clearly 
W1 P M, this contains W2 P M, and so on, up to infinity. Now there is uh, even, uh, so even more generally what we could do, we could take uh, a vector bundle E over M together with a connection, and we could define the Sobolev spaces for sections uh, of this bundle just in the same way. Uh, if you have a section, uh, we know what the derivative of S is, we know what the second derivative is, and we can integrate this. Uh, so Sobolev spaces are also defined for sections. Now the basic fact in this theory is the following theorem, sometimes called Sobolev embeddings theorem. Uh, but I will uh, take a combined version which includes uh, something which is known sometimes as Kondrachov lemma and so on. So uh, the statement is this, the space W, K, P, uh, M, say E, is contained in W, M, Q, E, M. Whenever, so, provided K minus N over P is bigger or equal than M minus N over Q. So let me assume for the whole theorem that our manifold M is in fact compact. So it's not important for all statements, but for some it will be crucial. <coughs> so what this actually means is the following. Uh, it means that we have a natural operator uh, which uh, maps this space into this one. Uh, so this is on uh, smooth functions given just by map the identity map. And this extends to a bounded map uh, between these Sobolev spaces. Right, in particular, part of the statement is that uh, norm uh, of u in w m q is small or equal than c norm of u in w k p, and this is for all functions u, and c doesn't depend on this function. The second statement is that uh, let us call this a J, an embedding operator. So J is <coughs> compact. <coughs> provided uh, we have uh, the strict inequality here. So but let me write this again. K minus N over P is strictly bigger than M minus N over P. So by the way, N is a dimension of M. And K is bigger than M. So that we don't lose any uh, differentiability. The third statement is that we have a natural map from W K P into C R provided again K minus N over P is strictly bigger. Uh, well, let us take strictly bigger than R. And the fourth statement is that uh, w, k, p, m, uh, r, so uh, that is a space of functions, is an algebra with respect to the pointwise multiplication provided k minus n over p is bigger than zero. Right, so as you see, uh, this uh, number uh, k minus n over p 
appears over and over again, and it essentially tells you the properties of the uh, functions in the Sobolev space. Uh, so uh, I don't want to prove uh, the theorem, the proof is uh, pretty much involved, but I wanted to tell you uh, just maybe uh, one particular example where you can see what is actually going on. Uh, are there any uh, questions to the statement of the theorem? Yes. So in the third part, it is also like extension of identity? Or uh, yes, it, it's always the extension of the identity. So by the way, uh, by saying that J is compact, what I mean is that uh, whenever you have a bounded sequence in this space, its image in this space has a, a convergent subsequence. Right? That's the definition of the compact operator. <coughs> now, uh, let me consider one example. Namely, we will take M to be the circle, so the simplest uh, manifold. Uh, and uh, let me take a smooth function on S1, uh, so what I uh, will define, so let, let u0 uh, of theta be uh, u of theta minus the integral uh, of u theta theta, so from 0 to, uh, to pi, 1 over to pi, so that the mean value of u0 is 0, and now uh, you know, by standard argument, you know that there exists uh, theta zero in S1, such that u zero at theta zero vanishes. Right, so uh, let me take now uh, u0 at the point theta minus u0 uh, at the point theta0. I can write this as an integral between theta0 and theta u prime of, say, phi d phi. Right, this is, of course, also true for the absolute values. But now I can use the cauchy schwarz inequality here uh, to estimate this as an integral between theta zero and theta, norm uh, u prime phi squared d phi to the power one half, and integral theta zero to theta one squared d phi squared. Now, uh, this is clearly uh, can be estimated further as a norm of, uh, this is all u0, uh, as a norm of u0 in w12 of s1 times, uh, so this is no greater than the length of the circle, so this is square root of 2 pi. <coughs> now, this is 0. And what we have, we have the, C, uh, the uh, bound on the C0 norm of U0 in terms of the W12 norm of U0, right? And uh, it's not hard from this to conclude that the norm of U in C0 is in fact bounded by a constant times norm of U in W12. So I assumed here that u was a smooth function, but now by an extension, we have this inequality for all functions in W12. And this is precisely one of the embedding theorems that uh, I had on the blackboard. Okay, <clears throat> if there are no questions to that, 
let us move to the next uh, topic, and this will be uh, elliptic operators. So here is a definition. Uh, I will say that L, so a map from C, uh, smooth sections on M of some bundle E into smooth sections o, again over M in some bundle e, uh, F <coughs> is a differential operator of order say L, uh, which I will always assume is positive, if locally uh, L uh, of F can be written as the sum A alpha of X D alpha D O DX alpha applied to F. Right there, alpha is a multi-index and the absolute value of alpha is at most L. Uh, so uh, what is going on here is this. Uh, I, choose a I choose first local coordinates on M, uh, these are X, so these are local coordinates on M. And I choose a local trivialization of both uh, E and F so that I can think of sections here as functions F from U into, say, RK. And now what I'm saying is whenever I, uh, whenever I made those choices, I can represent L as a, uh, you know, as a, a linear operator in the usual sense. So now the second part of the definition is uh, that L is elliptic if the following holds. So I will define the symbol of L to be simply the highest order terms of L. That is, the absolute value of alpha is equal to L. I take A alpha of x, and instead of taking here derivatives, I will replace this by a symbol. So I will take uh, psi to the power alpha, where psi is in Rn. What this means, uh, perhaps more concretely, is the sum over alpha 1, alpha n, so that alpha 1 plus well, they are all positive, so alpha 1 plus alpha n equals L, A alpha of x, psi 1 to the power alpha 1, and so on, psi n to the power alpha n. So this is called the symbol of the operator uh, because of the following, re uh, because of the obvious reason. And uh, I say that L is elliptic if the symbol uh, if sigma psi of L is invertible for all psi uh, non-zero and for all x. So the idea is very simple. Uh, right? If you have a differential operator, uh, it's clear that uh, some essential properties of this operator are encoded in the higher, uh, highest order terms. And we can encode this, uh, so the higher order terms in uh, sigma xi. And if this is invertible, you may hope that in some sense our operator is invertible as well. Well, this is not quite true, but there is uh, something left from that. So here is one example. 
uh, if you take the Laplacian uh, on Rn, that is just the sum of d2 over dx i squared, when i is from 1 to n, there's a minus sign. So the principal symbol of uh, this operator delta is just minus sum x, uh, xi i squared. And this is nothing else but just the squared norm of xi as a minus sign. And so clearly, if xi is non-zero, this is non-zero, so we can invert numbers. Now, here is perhaps a little more interesting example. Maybe before uh, giving an example, uh, so let me make a remark as yes, that sigma of L is well defined as a homomorphism from uh, pi star E into pi star F where pi from t star m into m is a natural projection. So that is, if I interpret here in the definition xi as a cotangent vector uh, to my manifold m, uh, the symbol for a fixed xi uh, makes sense as a homomorphism between uh, e and f. OK. Now, uh, perhaps. Uh, one prime uh, example, that is, uh, we take M to be Riemannian and oriented. Then we have, again, the Laplacian on function, say, this is minus star d star. And if you compute this in local coordinates, you will see that this is essentially the same Laplacian here, uh, plus some uh, lower order terms. So this is, again, an elliptic operator. OK, so uh, let us perhaps come to a more interesting example. So Dirac operators that we have seen the last time. Now, uh, if E is a Dirac bundle, We have defined, uh, you know, and I take a section of E, we have defined D of S to be the sum uh, D over DXI Clifford multiplied with Nabla D over DXI of S. So I is here from 1 to N, and XI is I again local coordinates on my manifold. Uh, say it again. Uh, right. Uh, wait. Uh, so I take D star, then star again. OK, but let us come uh, again to the Dirac uh, operator. So what we see here is that we have essentially the query, uh, we have uh, in local trivialization d over dxi plus zeros order terms. But zero order terms are sort of uh, immaterial for the definition of the principal symbol. And so what we see here is that the symbol, uh, you know, if I write say xi again as uh, xi1 and so on, xi n. Um, so uh, maybe better sum xi i d uh, xi. Right, uh, for the symbol of the Dirac operator, I have the sum i from 1 to n d over d xi, Clifford multiplied. 
So let me know the Clifford multiplication by, uh, say, rho uh, of this times uh, psi i, and this is just rho of, if you wish, psi i, so the sum psi i e over dx i. So this is essentially, uh, again, psi. But now what we know is that Clifford multiplication with psi when squared is minus norm of psi squared, that is rho psi minus one is one over the, over the norm of psi squared, so minus rho of psi. So in particular, the symbol is invertible, right? And therefore, this is uh, an elliptic operator. And so uh, we have seen in, uh, that in dimension four, uh, Dirac operator splits into two parts, so the positive Dirac operator and the negative Dirac operator, and both parts are uh, elliptic uh, as well. Now, the key property of uh, elliptic operators is the following uh, theorem. So uh, if you have uh, an operator L, this is a differential operator of order L between sections of vector bundles E and F, I can extend this as a bounded map from W, K, say k plus l p into w k p, and this is for any k and p. So the claim is um, that the norm of s in the w k plus l P norm is bounded by a constant times the norm of S, uh, of Ls uh, in the WK, uh, WK P norm plus norm of S in LP norm, uh, provided L is elliptic. And this is sometimes called an elliptic estimate. Right, uh, so uh, the proof of the theorem is not really uh, very complicated, but it requires certain symbolic uh, calculus, which I uh, don't want to introduce, so we will take this just uh, uh, as granted. Anyway, but the, uh, an important corollary uh, from this statement is the following one. So by the way, I uh, now always assume that M is compact, but let me, well for this it's not really uh, that important, but uh, here if M is compact, uh, well, L elliptic, So let me denote now this by, say, star. The claim is that then star is a fruit hole map with 
which means that the kernel of uh, L is uh, finite dimensional. So let me write dimension of the kernel of L is less than infinity, and the dimension of the core kernel of L. Uh, so this is uh, the target space, so W K P divided by the image of L is also finite dimensional. So sometimes in the definition you will also see that uh, the requirement is that the image of L is a closed subspace in the target space, but you can show that this actually follows from these two conditions. <coughs> and uh, another, so one more part of the theorem is that the kernel of L consists of smooth sections only. Okay, so let me give you uh, an idea of the proof because some elements of this proof uh, will play a role in the sequel. Uh, what we do is the following. So uh, if u is an element of wkp and is in the kernel of L, by the elliptic estimate, we know then that u is in uh, w, um, so let me take here maybe L in WKP for any K. And, uh, okay, anyway, uh, but from this, by the Sobolev embedding theorem, uh, we know that U is in CR for any R, and this tells us that U is a smooth section uh, on M. So this proves uh, the MOA part. So uh, let me prove that the uh, dimension of the kernel is finite. So what we do is we take any sequence UN in the kernel of L, and uh, we can normalize uh, the sequence such that the norm of U in LP is one. <coughs> Now, by the elliptic estimate, what we have is that the norm of u n in w k plus l, uh, well, say in w l, p is small or equal than c uh, norm l u 